Today we're going to be making a pasta carbonara. It's a really quick, simple, healthy and easy dish to do. So first off, um, we're going to start off with preparing the pasta because that's the longest step to do. And usually for two people, this is what the recipe um, will serve. And so we've already measured out um, two servings of pasta, which is about two mugs full. Um, and I've already done this here, so I'll just take this here first. And so first off, we're just going to boil the pasta. Um, it'll take roughly about 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is pop it into a saucepan. And then we want to take this jug of water here. And you want to make sure that the water covers the pasta. That's enough. Around that, should be fine. And I want to put that on a about a medium heat. So we'll leave that to boil and then I'll move on to the next steps. Okay, so the next step what we want to do is I'm going to take one tablespoon of oil, of olive oil, into a saucepan. Just like that. And with the oil, I'm going to prepare the garlic. And you want to use about two to three cloves to peel off. So what I will do is peel it. I want to remove the skin off it. Like that. And you don't need to chop it. What we're going to do is just put it in a garlic presser. Okay, just like that on the heat. Put that on a low heat. Yep. yep. So if you just leave the garlic and the oil on a low heat for about two minutes, now we're just going to take the mushrooms, um, and you want about two to three large mushrooms, should be fine. And if you want, you can um, buy the other option, which are the small button mushrooms, um, but I've got these ones for today. And you just want to cut them into small slices around, that's thinly sliced, okay. and then into halves again. Okay, so then the next step is the bacon. So here we've just bought some bacon lardons, got them from Lidl. I think it was about one seventy-nine for the pack of two. So this is half of a pack, but that's plenty for two people. So what we're going to do is pop these into the pan with the garlic and the oil. And we're just going to lightly fry these for about, probably for about two minutes. Make sure you keep an eye on the pasta because you don't want it to boil over. Yeah. Okay, so the bacon's now starting to brown a little bit, which is what you want. But you don't want to cook it too crispy, but if you prefer it like that, you can. But, um, okay, so now I think you can add the mushrooms. Put them in the middle. Bring this part. So again, you just want to cook the mushrooms for about two to three minutes until they start to brown a little. And okay. So this pasta's doing. 
Do um, so obviously this isn't a vegetarian option, but there's lots of alternatives you could do. Um, so for example, to substitute the bacon, you could perhaps have some corn chicken in there, which would be quite nice. Or if you're sticking to um, very vegetarian, I suppose you could add some chickpeas, you could add, sometimes add peppers to mine, add some onions. Um, perhaps you could use different beans, like cannelloni beans, some chickpeas. And obviously later I'm going to add some spinach anyway. Um, I guess that's just a few ideas and just experiment what you want. Okay. So I think that's about ready now. So now I'm going to pass over to my lovely friend Emily here, who's going to finish the second half of the recipe. Okay, so with the pasta, to check whether it's done or not, um, normally you just get a little bit on a spoon, fish it out with a fork, and just well, obviously blow on it because it's going to be really hot, and just check if it's ready. Um, it should be quite soft and tender and not hard, um, because you don't want to overcook it because that takes a lot of the, the starch out of it as well, and it goes quite sticky. So now the pasta's ready, I'm just going to take it off the heat. Um, I've got a colander here, just to take the water off. Um, but if you haven't got a colander, you can use a sieve as well. Um, it's just an easier way just to drain the pasta without having um, a watery dish. So I'm just going to take it over to the sink. And give it a little shake, and just to get the water off. And pop it back in the saucepan. And also, you can use wholemeal pasta as well um, as an alternative. We used white pasta because it was um, it's slightly cheaper, um, so it's more affordable on a student budget. But wholemeal um, is less refined and has more of the goodness of the grain in, so we would recommend to, to try and keep to wholemeal. Okay, so the next step is um, we're going to take the creme fraiche over here and mix it into the pasta. Um, We've used creme fraiche instead of cream because it's a lower fat alternative um, and it's not as rich, so it's, I think it's more pleasant really than, than cream. So You can also get it in a um, half fat version as well, which has well, half the amount of fat in, again, more healthier, but it's entirely, entirely up to you. So I'm just going to mix that in now. I'm just giving it a good stir until it's thoroughly mixed in. And it should look like that when it's done. OK, so the, the next step is, is to um, get the spinach in the saucepan. Um, we've turned it off the heat for the moment, so we're just going to put it back on heat again, just a low heat. And we've got a lovely big bowl of spinach here. But for one portion, we would probably use one big handful. So as it serves two, I'm going to use probably two handfuls, maybe, OK, maybe one and a half. But when the spinach starts cooking, it does really, um, it really condenses and it goes to nothing. So as soon as it gets, as soon as it gets hot, it's gone. Just going to cook it off just a little bit. Get the spinach nice and warm. And I'm just going to do this for about two to three minutes. There you go. You can see that the spinach is starting to wilt now. And it'll be more easier to manage in the saucepan. You can also buy fro frozen spinach as well from the supermarkets if you don't want to buy fresh because normally the fresh comes in like a, a big bag and it's quite hard to use before the sell-by date. So frozen spinach is also cheaper than fresh spinach. You can keep it as long as you like in the freezer and they normally come in little clusters of about that big. So for this recipe you probably need about two to three of the little clusters. It adds a nice little 
source of vitamins and minerals. A bit more colour to the dish as well. Okay, now that's done. As you can see, the spinach has gone down to nothing, which is what we want to see. Nice and green. So I'm just going to take that off the heat now and mix this into the pasta. I'm just going to take this across. this to one side and mix this thoroughly in with the pasta. And there we go, so it should look like that when you've got it all mixed in. Okay, so the next step and the final step is to add the cheese. Um, we've just bought a pre-grated cheese, which in some supermarkets can be the same price as regular cheese. Um, but you can, depending on what supermarket you shop at, for the cheaper supermarkets, they have um, cheese that can, you can be bought from 50p onwards. So it's quite a cheap ingredient and it does last very well, very long in the fridge. So a serving size for one adult is, they say, matchbox size. So as it serves two, I'm just going to take a good handful and just mix it in. But it's up to you. You can sprinkle it on top as well, if that's what you prefer. So I'm just going to sprinkle it in. Save a bit left over to sprinkle on top as well. And just mix that in. And as it's all nice and warm in here, it should all melt together and make a Nice consistency. That's lovely. Okay, so that's all, all mixed in now. Okay, right. Okay, now we're going to serve the dish. So just going to put half of it in the first bowl. It's lovely. And pop half in the second. Lovely. So there we go. There is your dish. And just to season it, we're just going to take some black pepper and sprinkle a little, a little bit on top. Um, obviously, salt and pepper kind of go together, but we're not going to add salt because the bacon is well equipped with salt and we don't, we don't need to add any more. So here's our dish. This is the final product. And it's such a great dish, this carbonara, because you can adapt it to whatever ingredients you want to pop in. As long as you've got the creme fraiche and the cheese, it's still really a carbonara. You can add some more vegetables in it to make it more healthy and more nutrient-packed. At the moment, we've got um, a good amount of carbohydrates. We've got protein from the bacon. We've got some vitamins and minerals coming through from the mushroom and the spinach, some iron sources. But obviously, you can add more peppers or more chickpeas to bulk it out. You could even take the bacon out if you wanted to, but you want a nice mix of vegetables in there to keep that level of protein up. Um, obviously we would always advise to go wholemeal whenever you can, so that wholemeal pasta should be on the, on the shopping list. I'm going to call Isabelle over and we're going to go enjoy it together.